Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 701. This is 701 of the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and I hope you are doing well wherever this lovely show may find you. I hope you are doing splendid. How am I? You know how it is. All things are good on my side of town. I cannot complain. I cannot complain. It's been a while since I last recorded a pod. I actually just checked the dates on my fleety phone and it was the 22nd when I did 700, that big celebration pod. And I don't know why it's taking me so long. I actually do know, but it's not safe for work. So I'll just keep that to myself. But I am glad to be back in the hot seat once again with you lovely people. I've been re-listening to a few pods and I do need to say outright just before I continue. I do apologize for those of you who listen to my pod and have heard me tapping away somewhere along the line when I'm flipping recording these pods. I think it's been something that I kind of haven't noticed I do when I may be nervous or excited or really passionate about what I'm talking about. There'll be these little taps everywhere. So I'm going to refrain myself from tapping. I currently, if you're not watching this video, you won't notice it, but I'm currently got my hand underneath basically you know in the flipping crevice of my knee just behind my knee I've got my hands flipping locked in there so I don't um, end up tapping away on the table when I'm not touching the computer because I feel like that can be a tiny bit annoying especially if you listen to stuff via the headphones if you've got it on your loudspeaker somewhere or wherever it's all good if you listen for your car you probably won't notice it but if you are listening for your headphones you may have noticed some tapping so I do apologize I'll do my best to correct that as we go forward and proceed Next thing I was going to mention actually was I've had a really interesting point, right? Because with my headphones, we're into quickly mention this in case you're watching and you're wondering why I have one yellow cup and one black cup. So day to day use, I've got a couple of headphones that I use, right? I've got a couple of really, I've got a really high, high level pair of flipping phonons. I don't really use a lot, but I try to use them at home for kind of monitoring use and stuff. I don't really take them out. They're really expensive. They're all kind of a collaboration with mutant noise, no gifts. So I kind of don't want to mess those up. So I keep them to one side, but my daily kind of headphones I use are obviously my Sony um, WH, whatever the flipping names are called let me just see from my flipping bluetooth settings here i've got my usual um sony's which i use all the time doesn't really matter what they are but you, you get a gist let me see actually let me get my phone and see if i can find them so i've got my regular headphones i use from sony um day to day my bluetooth um headphones and those are the wh 1000 xm mark threes those are great. I've just recently repaired um, one of the plastic sort of straps on there. I bought them like that. They were broken and the guy had kind of taped them up, but they were ba basically in good, you know, good enough use to kind of use day to day. The sound is still perfect in them and they're just kind of broken. And if you look on eBay, you'll find quite a lot of those headphones have that fault. So I think the, um, the head, the headband strap kind of breaks sometimes through just use or whatever it may be. And it's just a plastic thing. So people usually sell spare parts, um, like 3d moldy plastic bits that you can kind of do yourself and kind of, you know, re um, repair the headphone band. So I did that as a project repair the headphone band. So they're perfect. Um, when I actually took off the tape, it was funny because I realized that he didn't break it through like you know um user error it was a dog or a cat or something because you saw little uh, bite marks on the headphones so the cat or dog must have bit the headphones and they cracked and then he kind of repaired them um by duct taping um one of the flipping headbands so i'm basically able to repair those and then when i'm using when i'm when i'm djing when i'm doing the podcast i try and use these headphones which are the sign the hd 25s i've had an odd run with these some really odd bad luck basically i've bought two brand new sets i think yeah i actually think this is kind of crazy i bought two sets brand new i bought the 25th anniversary or is it 25th anniversary whatever anniversary one that were that came with the yellow ear cups to kind of represent the original sennheisers um that came out many many years ago so they came with these kind of you know yellow cups that you could kind of take off these rubber cups and or, sorry leather cups and you can put the other sort of cups on and then i also got like a, a standard pair right that just that non-special anniversary one and for some reason, both of the headsets, both of those headsets, both of them, right? If I'm not mistaken, I think the right ear or the left ear, sorry, went, went popped out, like kind of died, the left driver. And I've tried to repair them. There's a couple of videos online where essentially you have to clean out the connections because on these headphones, part of the reason why Sennheiser HD25s are very popular, especially with DJs, is that they're meant to be kind of indestructible. They're kind of really good sound and they're also kind of easy to kind of throw around in your bag and they and they and you can repair every kind of component on them, essentially. You can repair the, like everything's kind of, you know, 
um what's that word called everything is repairable and everything is um i forgot the word for it where you can kind of take bits apart and replace them with other bits so because of that they're very popular and they're kind of fairly cheap as headphones go i think they're around 80 to maybe 90 pounds or something or maybe even cheaper if you check on amazon but for some reason both sets of headphones the same um ear went uh, died basically the same driver in the ear died out and at first i thought it was a connection issue because sometimes when i'll be playing out i'd have to kind of move the cable a little bit and it'll play on both headphones but after a lot of time that connection issue kind of died out and then it was clearly an issue with the driver and i had to kind of basically replace um take off the faulty headphones on the other the other cup and replace them on the one i was working so now i've got one set of headphones i've got two drivers that don't work because they're both the right ones and i've got these with different sort of cups and that's why you got the yellow and the right going on but you know in the back sorry just a weird thing that i noticed it's like why, why am i so unlucky that i bought two pairs of the same headphones and the same ear went out a bit strange but anyway whatever it is what it is so um there's been a lot of music that's dropped over the last few weeks and i felt like i've not been able to get through a lot of it and i feel like maybe a few of my um music fans out there and aficionados may agree with me i feel like this year so far albums have kind of been a little bit underwhelming um i've recently kind of got through most of um, victoria monet's new album jaguar 2 obviously the sequel to jaguar which is absolutely phenomenal and it maybe is one of the best r&b albums i've heard in a very very long time but of course that's victoria monet she's at the top of her game but i think for the rest of the you know of the stuff that i listen to regardless of genre i feel like a lot of people have kind of let me down really with listening experience of the albums it hasn't been that great um it's kind of hard to get through a lot of people's stuff and i found myself just listening to like old stuff or making my own playlist and stuff but the albums haven't been hitting as much as i would hope and i'm what, not too sure if it's just that this year's a bit of a dud a bit of a miss it sometimes happens in life you know where you get a couple of years where the albums aren't that great and then everyone kind of gets inspired again and then everyone starts dropping heat or if it's just maybe an attention span thing maybe i've got so much on my plate or so much i'm consuming in terms of social media in terms of videos in terms of movies documentaries reading all this content i'm trying to consume and it's just not enough time to sit around and listen to music or whatever it may be that i did before which i don't really think is the case because for the most part i'm training at least a minimum of like an hour every other day so that already gives me one hour of solid music listening and sometimes i find myself because before i wouldn't do this before i'd always kind of be like okay i'm gonna put an album on just let it play for the hour and not touch my phone it's kind of like my time to kind of focus on the workout and shit but i found myself now going to my phone more often because this music is just so terrible i'm like i'm not gonna waste my workout on this fucking shit so i'll just rather go to my phone and change whatever's playing and kind of get it started up again so it's been a bit strange i'm not really sure what's going on but anyway that being said i have been enjoying dig at these new album um not really the biggest digger d fan i have to be honest but it is quite encouraging to see him at least attempt to make a change in his music and in his sound because i feel like you know before you maybe categorize him as maybe drill as maybe uk rap but i feel like he's he's playing with genres a little bit more or i say playing with sounds not genres playing with sounds uh playing with how he's uses his voice there's a few more bits of singing here um there's a few interesting melodies in here and whatnot that i'm enjoying and in his new album Album called back to square one but one of the main things i'm enjoying from this album is maybe one of the most i feel like disrespectful songs i've ever heard in my entire life and it's track eight featuring m honcho who i'm a big fan of right he's got an album actually coming out in september i think which i'm super excited for because he's really 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 amazing so i'm really curious to see what he's going to be cooking up for us or what he's going to be able to you know chef up once um september comes around but Baby Mom's Crib on Digger D's album featuring Emma Honcho might be one of the most disrespectful songs I've heard. Because, I, you know, from not knowing much about Digger D, seeing stuff about him on social media, seeing some clips here and there, watching some music videos, um, and, you know, whatever, and listen to the album, you get the impression that he enjoys being disrespectful, <laughs> right? And I feel like this is the pinnacle of disrespectful. The idea that he takes joy in essentially hooking up with all these like guys who are meant to be bad man in their own flipping you know way and um, baby moms right and just the, let me just read the lyrics to you via genius right so you can tell what i mean because when i listen to this in the gym i legitimately can stop laughing in my head like i was like oh my god this is this is so fucking rude so it opens up like this m honcho in the intro um i'm at your baby mom's crib 
I'm at your baby mum's crib. I'm at your baby mum's crib. And he's croning this, right? Singing this in the most flipping, sultry, you know, no homo fucking, um, you know, tones that you've ever heard, right? And then Hunter does that really, really amazingly. He can make the most sinister stuff sound so harmonic, so melodic, so, you know, he can make the most sinister stuff sound so fucking beautiful to your ears. He's fucking incredible at doing that. And then it continues. It says, at the core, it starts, right? I met your baby mum's crib. Walk down the store. We walk down the stairs, and I open up the fridge. Get a Capri Sun, man. I know that it's your kids. <laughs> Sorry for the drama, but it's the it's his mama let me in. I like pistols. That's my shit. Don't need a switch. Finger real itchy. I need physio again. Fuck her one time. Now it's Cheerio again. <laughs> double entendre there right cheerio like because when i heard it the first time i thought he said cheerios again as in like he got another station to come back the next day <laughs> or it's you know double entendres in cheerio bye bye anyway it continues 619 your bitch <laughs> ray mysterio again <laughs> any of my wrestling guys you know what honestly that intro or that fucking chorus legitimately might be one of the most disrespectful things i've heard in my entire life and he's singing the whole way through and then of course digger d comes through first line step daddy digger handsome ass nigger <laughs> step daddy digger and he's like 20 or something right or 21 22 it's just so fucking flagrant private jet to paris on the weekend for some dinner 20 bullets in my pistol i ain't carrying a, sp a spinner you know everything over here is bigger i couldn't pick between them hoes so i had them both why buy a bitch some flowers she already got a rose make her feel special buy her, her shoes buy her, her clothes keep it on the low i hope that we don't get exposed i don't i don't beef over women g don't make me mad tell him chill i don't want to blam your baby dad <laughs> god if i told you i was trying i'd be lying because you know i'm the reason niggas are dying my heart got so cold it must be frozen i'd rather than i'd rather that than give it to a little hoe and get it broken so worried about the back door they let the windows open i climbed in and bust the front door for my bro them yo and then of course he comes in back again honcho i'm at your baby mom's crib walk down the stairs and i open up the fridge get a capri sun man i know it's your kids sorry for the drama but it's my you see his mama let me in i like pistols that's my shit don't need a switch finger real itchy i need a physio again fuck her one time and now it's cheerio again six or nine your bitch ray mysterio again <laughs> like i will that tune up seven million times i fucking love it so big up digger d enjoy the album if my only criticism i'd say about the album and this is not really a criticism i feel like it's more so my issue because i consume a lot of american content it does sound a little bit little dirkish to me a little bit too much but then i think about his age his early 20s and you know if if he's going to emulate somebody it should be digger d so it should be someone like a little Dirk. It makes more sense. Those should be his kind of heroes or people he kind of looks up to in terms of inspiration. So that doesn't really make any sense. And if I'm the same person that's complaining that all these Drew artists sound the same, and then one Drew artist who's, you know, one of the hottest guys out on the scene now who could essentially, if you wanted to be lazy and just do the same old nonsense drill stuff that he was doing before and still sell, you know, a lot of records and still be incredibly rich. The fact that he's trying at least to do something a bit different and to kind of you know maybe adopt a more international sound that would allow him to tour the world because i think this album is definitely going to resonate across europe across the world and allow him to really kind of go out there and kind of flex his artistry and maybe collab with people abroad and whatnot blah 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 then i shouldn't be bemoaning it you know i mean i shouldn't disregard that because at least he's trying something because these other guys out here are still recycling the same old shit they were doing in 2019 so big up digger d for at least trying and like i said track eight on that album um, Digger D's new album that's out now called Back to Square One is incredibly disrespectful. I love it. I'm probably going to play it as my tune of the day on this podcast. So if you want to listen to that, rub up to the flipping end or scrub up, sorry, to the end of the pod and you'll hear that playing because this track legitimately made me laugh and I haven't, you know, felt something from music in a long time. Everything kind of sounds formulaic and kind of whatever. This was an incredibly flagrant, um, you know, true to real life kind of account 
because I feel like a lot of guys, especially in the UK, I, feel, I don't think it's an American thing. I think in the UK more, we take a lot more pride and a lot more flipping. It's kind of seen as a big W if you do end up smashing some famous guy's baby mum or just some guy's baby mum. It's seen as like a flex, especially if you're, if you're able to kind of, you know, take her out of the depths of poverty or you're able to kind of, you know, wine and dine her and show her the good life and essentially embarrass the other guy because he can't afford the same lifestyle you're affording to this woman. Which was, I feel like in America, people maybe see baby mums as a bit washed. I don't know. Maybe they don't, maybe they do. I kind of see there's an opposite kind of contrast. So maybe that's why the baby mum thing is seen as a bit of a trophy in this, in this record. And it's seen as an ultimate level of disrespect because, you know, like it's essentially these big stars in the UK are able to take a baby mum. It means you can't really do nothing because you probably don't have as much money as these guys. You have to just take the L. But anyway, regardless, enjoyed it. Crazy track. Um big up Quincy Tellum on the productions. Fucking mag banging M Honcho on the chorus. The vocals are incredible. Like he smashed it. Like love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Haven't got any more good words to say. I haven't got more words to say about it, man, to be fair. It's just fucking incredible. Moving on, it was um, not in your carnival over the weekend, if you're not aware of it. It happened um, across Sunday and Monday. Sunday is usually the family day, kids day, and then Monday is when all the adults go and try and dagger, um, you know, 18 to 25-year-old women, basically. <laughs> That's what basically happens in fucking carnival. Um, over the years, I have fell in and out of love of carnival like every other londoner has but in the end i love it even though i don't go as much um i haven't been probably since 2019 or something i still love the fact that we have this one event in london where you're able to go out on the streets drink crazy smoke like crazy do a bunch of balloons bust a wine eat some fucking caribbean food and the most important thing for me for carnival which i love which i kind of you know regret not going this year after seeing some pictures from my friends and stuff on the instagram account is the ability to see loads of people that you haven't seen in ages i feel like culturally carnival is one of the main kind of cultural touch points that gets everyone together like doesn't because usually you know i'd say london is kind of multicultural anyway it really is in terms of its approaches events everyone kind of goes to everything but across time you know as time progresses and everyone kind of gets older everyone kind of moves on to do other things so sometimes it can be hard to see all your kind of seen friends and stuff that you kind of maybe used to hang around them you know what you used to hang out with back in the day so carnival is usually the best time to see them you see them all in one place loads of fucking good catch-ups get to happen it's always good vibes um you know maybe some after parties and whatever maybe some branded stuff i remember back when i used to go the boiler room stuff was really big um the, the free entry to the boiler room stuff was big because you used to get free drinks the free entry to the red stuff was great as well for the same sort of thing and all that stuff used to come because you see all these people you haven't seen in ages and everyone be in a good mood and they went to kind of you know have make sure everyone had a good time and shit so that was kind of incredible but having seen those clips of my friends over there i was have to say it kind of did kind of remind me again of just how you know fragile how just how quickly things change right there was a time in my life when we were all kind of basically inseparable and then you know over the period of time things just kind of changed i say a lot of it probably has to do with me and my inability to kind of cultivate maintain um friendships and relationships in a really meaningful way i'm just not good at it or i just maybe don't like to do it and i stay away from it who knows but either way it is really evident to see that i along with maybe a couple of other people are the only ones that are not there everyone else is still there so everyone else is still doing the same things everyone else is still enjoying their same friends and having a good time the only thing that's missing really is guys like me and a few others who have purposely maybe stayed away who've been pushed away whatever it may be that's kind of an interesting thing to see and it's kind of a bit bittersweet to be like oh you know what i haven't really spoken to these guys in years but it's good to see that they're still friends even though i'm not still in that kind of clique but they're still clearly still friends and stuff and they still get to hang out and i'm sure you get to see all these other people going around as well so it kind of goes back to my same point that i made in the previous pod where i was basically saying hey if you're under 25 and you're at the point where you're like you know um complaining about your friends and saying you don't have any and you, you know they don't get you and stuff i honestly telling you as as an as a guy that's older than you please make sure that you try and cultivate those friends and you try and recover rescue maintain whatever it is friendships that you have now because as the as the years go by it becomes harder and harder to do that stuff because people just move on and they have other priorities they have other friends that kind of fill those voids that you left behind and no one's out here no one's going to be waiting for you no matter how good of a friend you are no matter how cool you are how funny you are how whatever you are kind it doesn't matter no one's going to be waiting around for you until you decide to be their friend they're just going to move on and get somebody else to kind of fill that void so if you are feeling a little bit 
um, cynical about shit, don't try to get at least you know a good little click with you that kind of stays around because it's it's always a nice reminder of what those clicks mean when you go to places like carnival because that's where you get to kind of you know really kind of have a good time in groups and stuff lose each other in the crowds find each other again all that stuff is fucking phenomenal like i absolutely love it so i'm going to play a little clip that i kind of ripped from twitter um showing some of the scenes um at not Neil carnival 2023 so you can see what the vibe is saying i'm sure most of you know wagwa when it comes to carnival but for those that don't let's quickly play this little clip here that i kind of ripped from Carnival, uh, clip from Twitter, sorry, and it'll give you a good idea of what the vibe is saying. You have to be so careful though, as inviting as that may look to some people, you have to be so careful. You have to, especially now these with the cameras and stuff out, the worst thing ever to happen to you as you kind of go and do your little two-step towards them, Batty's whining and stuff is getting the dreaded stop and the look back over the shoulder to check if you're fucking good looking <laughs> or if you're cool and then you get the walk away and that shit will crush your soul that shit will crush your soul sorry not your soul and it will live with you forever and ever so you have to move with real caution out there and not on hill streets don't get too crazy don't let your hands go wandering don't let your fucking hips gyrate too closely to somebody that doesn't want to dance with you feel the mood look at the climate around you make sure you do your p's and q's check all your shoulders and when you move move decisively and also have an exit plan so if you get the if you get the little uh, you're ugly kind of look you know where to kind of duck out but don't move too hastily because if you do you could get cemented in fucking you know 4k forever and ever and people will never forget what you end up looking like when you're out there like this so move with caution for next year you get the gist right so it looked fucking fun it looked like a great time everyone clearly had a absolute blast um i have kind of fallen out of love with it just because of the journey there traveling from where i'm from going to flipping west london is just too long um and because where i live there's a very big um community of caribbean people and african people who love to go to carnival so it's not as if like when you're going to from other places the train journey is a bit you know empty towards west end and when you get to central maybe it kind of clear it kind of gets busier from where i am the train is as busy going as it is coming back and on the way back is usually the i feel like the main reason why i don't go anymore because if you're not if you're not aware about carnival it's essentially in a certain area in flipping west london around sort of like the labrocoogie grove area and when you leave the station they kind of let you leave near where the carnival is and then you kind of follow it around these particular roads where there's all these little um there's these um sound systems and stuff and sometimes there's obviously the 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 float i've got what they call floats whatever with all the procession of different sort of people um playing their music and stuff and dancers all the flipping feathers and shit which is pretty crazy but then when it ends i'm assuming because of a you know people traffic sort of thing they usually make you go the whole a really long way around and you end up having to go to a, a station that's way far away from where you are actually located at the at the festival at the, sorry at the carnival to go and get a train back 
which means everybody takes the same route and you all get in a train at the same time because it all ends at seven so when you get on that train it's still as busy and plus a central london train during bank holiday um monday it's still going to be fucking busy so you have to tra- you have to travel back with all those people that you kind of were with there all the way back again everybody's thinking of bo everyone's being noisy and shit no space it's just crazy so I, the journey at home is just not worth it for me and and then basically you know fundamentally i'm not really that bothered about um bashment music that much that i would need to go i think the only reason that would really make me want to go is mostly the food because i feel like caribbean food for some reason especially in my part of london is really inconsistent in terms of quality some one, one restaurant might be right highly regret highly regarded but then after a couple of months suddenly the quality control goes down and the quality of food isn't that great and then you kind of miss the you know the good quality food they have but i feel like in carnival it's one of the only times where all the best in my theory anyway all the best caribbean restaurants from london basically congregate in that one spot to kind of show off to kind of show how good they cook and whatnot and they were competing and you essentially get the best possibility to get some of the best caribbean food you've ever had in all one spot and then sometimes if you're lucky towards the end especially on a monday when they're cleaning up and stuff and they you know, don't want to take all this hot food back with them they'll give you crazy discounts on the food so sometimes you'll come back with like two boxes of fucking rice and peas and jerk chicken and shit for like you know a tenner or something do you know what i mean like crazy amounts of food like really big 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 heapy portion so i've always been a fan of going to those side places and just going for the food i swear to god because it's just amazingly how good it is when you get there but that like i said the other reason is also to go see your friends and hang out with people and see the kind of vibes and then i'm going to play another quick clip here which is another reason why to go because sometimes you might end up seeing your favorite artist performing there and we saw I saw this clip going viral on Twitter of gigs um, performing the unofficial UK national anthem to a crowd full of people. And it was quite heartwarming to see that because, you know, having listened to his recent album, I don't think anybody's going to be playing that album out the way they're, they're playing some of his older stuff. So it's good to see him still getting the love that he deserves. And obviously the crowd going really crazy when they fucking heard it because this song is still an absolute anthem. absolutely amazing man big up gigs good to see him getting the love and appreciation he deserves the unofficial flipping national anthem of the uk is gigs talking the hardest if you haven't heard it before please type that in into your youtube into your spotify into your apple app music that is gigs talking the hardest performing that live out there at one of the fucking sound system one of the stands one of the places over there at flipping carnival absolutely love it and then obviously to finish we got these clips and these posts courtesy of shadeborough who posted some carnival highlights which is fucking incredible because it features this one video i've seen on social that boggled my mind because i was like how the fuck did these two people get up there this is an incredible scene so big up whoever these people are because you put on a hell of a show and you really did put a smile on my face when i saw this on social i can't imagine how incredible this must have been to see in real life actually so look at this look at this courtesy of the shade bro this is absolutely phenomenal can you see that there's essentially a couple right on the bridge near central Lanza, the where that where this must be right um this one of the bridges that you cross when you're going to carnival and they are whining on the fucking bridge on the side of the bridge <laughs> man's like whining on the other side of the bridge just fucking insane man i fucking love london so that's obviously a good indication of you know the vibes that happen over there if flipping carnival if that's your daughter you're gonna be pissed but if that's your son you're gonna be pumping up your chest because my man is up there like fucking spider-man one hand on the waist one hand on the side of the bridge grinding anyway we continue 
Next slide, of course, we've got all the people there, processional people having a great bunch of fun, all the colours and stuff, all the vibes, all the enjoyments. Probably everybody's there's, you know, yaks off their mind of fucking rare nephews, magnums, wagwans, Hennessy. It's such a vibe, man. Like you can legitimately get contact high um, from walking around the streets of London during carnival because, you know, you don't really get that usually there today because, you know, um, weed and cannabis is not le not legal here. But on that one occasion, this and usually, um, what's it called? And... um. And 420 are usually the, some of the funnest times in London out and about because we don't really get a lot of like out. We don't really get a lot of fun outdoor street life in London or in the UK because I guess we just can't be trusted as Brits or as English people. We're a little bit, you know, we're all liabilities in our own way. And we all kind of don't really, you know, we don't respect the rules and shit. So this is usually a fun time. Um because it's a bit lawless um there's a video clip here of an old lady winding it up as well having a fucking good time big up her young in spirit um you know did that woman try to give her a drink oh, okay i thought she tried to give her a little cup full of Hennessy <laughs> to keep her going but yeah she looks fit and able and ready to go and winding it up you know if she could bend over i'm sure there'll be a guy there ready to dagger up, ready to dagger granny up that like, don't get it twisted when people when the guys come out during carnival they are thirsty brother thirsty they'll grab up that oap hip and dagger it up until she anyway they'll, they'll be breaking her back like, like they wanted those fucking chiropractors <laughs> anyway it continues we've got another picture here of a of a young lady here in a crazy crazy costume nice to see that as well during carnival right looking absolutely fantastic great to see all these type of things usually these girls are, are are protected from the hungry guys by uh like ropes or sometimes human shields because some of the guys can't, can't keep their hands to themselves <laughs> and they see them on the street so it's good to see her looking safe and checking her shoulders as a good london girl would do making sure she's aware of who's behind her at all bloody times so big up this young lady next slide here we've got our oh, mizzy was out there in a suit on with balloons and wearing that fucking stupid hat yo mizzy must no offense to the kid but he, the bo must be banging in it can you imagine what he smells like day to day like not to be offensive because he's always wearing that fucking stupid hat he's got this crazy outfit on right he's got tracksuit pants with a suit jacket and white socks like he looks horrendous like absolutely zero drip <laughs> so big up <laughs> mizzy um and then you've also got a clip here that features somebody proposing to somebody at carnival with his fucking does he has he got his ass out is it got builder's bum or am i mistaken i feel like the guy is fucking bum showing he's proposing to his girlfriend but she doesn't look like she's happy about this or am i mistaken does she look happy i don't think she looks too happy about it she's kind of shrugging her shoulders acting a bit of like a like she doesn't really give a fuck and yeah he's trying to propose trying to make it right his boys are clowning him like we do in england we don't take anything serious and yes yeah, it's, it's turned into a bit of a joke thing but proposing to a girl at carnival is sickening so big up them hopefully she said yes because my man was out there with his bum out in that in puma boxes trying to propose to his girlfriend in central london you can't go worse than that there's a clip here of a guy that looks like he does weights in the gym with a shysty on picking up a, a very very big girl and dropping on the floor oh my god oh my god okay that's not a good look but also that is quite representative of the gym physiques we have here in london most guys in london that work out especially some of the guys that do like um the bar training barbell i don't know what they call the bar things they're usually built like this they have incredible upper bodies like ripped to shit pecs you know for days abs always you know abs with all kind of fucking you know ups and downs in them but the legs are always like twigs which makes sense because most guys in london like to wear amiris and skinny jeans and shit so i get it if you want to just have the guns out for your t-shirts and still wear skinny jeans cool but i've always thought you know maybe keeping your body somewhat proportional is quite a better look but hey it is what it is hopefully the girl's okay hopefully the guy's ego is survives but he's got his shy on so no one will know who he is and then the next page you've got a clip here of a looks, looks like a baby grinding on a woman on the floor right but then when he gets up, he puts a joint in his mouth and everyone realizes it's actually an adult. It's a grown man. It's a grown fucking man. People thought it was a fucking baby, but it's actually a grown man. It's actually A-side. That's who it is. They realize it was fucking A-side. 
Ey, es hat aber hier grinding on this girl. Every one of us a small child. But it's actually A-side. Yeah, it's actually A-side there, right? Looking all grumpy. Um, probably gonna play some fucking Robert Glasper and clear the dance floor. Right? <laughs> there he is, right? And then talk about how amazing he is. A-side's there on the shoulders of the guy. If you know, you know. But yeah, um, Carnival looked like fun like fun not flun and i'm kind of you know bummed i didn't go but usually you know i usually give myself an opportunity a window to go by going outside and you know buying something from the store drinking and shit at the same time everyone's leaving so if i feel like i got the itch on a sunday i'll usually try and arrive on a monday the fact that i didn't go basically tells me everything i need to know about my current st about my current feelings on carnival I love seeing other people enjoy it. It brings me a lot of joy and it makes me smile because like I said, we don't really have good outside lifestyle options in the UK because we're very anti-fun. Our government is super, we're living like in a bit of a nanny state, right? They don't really let us do anything to be honest, but you know, for the most part, we also can't be trusted. So it kind of is a bit of a bummer, but I do like it when I see my fellow Londoners out there enjoying themselves, having a good time. And people that visit from all over the world is also great to see because we don't really get that option. The only issue with the whole kind thing is i feel like the after party scene still isn't the greatest um i remember we used to go to this after party in this pub which was up the road from kind of i forgot what the name of it was and they used to put on some all right events i remember some iconic memorable dj ez sessed in there that were absolutely crazy right i could still probably feel the sweat dripping from the walls of his amazing sets like one of the greatest djs we have from this country actually doesn't get the enough support and love that he probably should do he's someone that should be playing a fucking fold all night long thinking about it actually i'd love to see a fucking dj ez set at fold all night long he'd absolutely tear that piece of fucking pieces or if he actually decides one day to decide to just jump on to techno and start playing that that uh, with the stuff that he already plays off it'll be a fucking lock off but anyway that being said um i think carnival is great for the people that love it it's a great celebration of caribbean culture and everything else concerning black people and shit the food's fucking fantastic seeing all the fucking outfits the music um you know the vibes everyone's always in, usually in a good mood i fucking love it so big up carnival and long live carnival and may it long 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 continue may it long 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 continue so this is some interesting news that came out of the blue for me because I guess maybe I wasn't really paying enough close attention to the climate out there and to the response of Suprema fans. But it looks like um, it has been confirmed now that Tremaine Emery has reportedly left his position as creative director at Supreme, which is to me a bit of a shock. I'm not going to lie. I did not see this one coming. But after reading some stuff online and seeing the response of fans from his previous collections, allegedly that were under his kind of tutelage and stuff that he designed for, it looks like Supreme fans have never really been that sold on Tremaine Emery's um, appointment over that Supreme. So maybe this was always on the card somewhere along the line. But let's read the article here, courtesy of Complex, that sheds some light on what happened and why it may have happened. So um, as it continues here, I see a picture of Tremaine. The article says as follows. Tremaine Emery has reportedly left his role as creative director of Supreme. Sources have told um, Complex that Supreme's full 2023 collection will be the last under Emery's creative direction. The reason for Emery's abrupt, um, abrupt departure sorry, is currently unknown. Emery, Denim, Tears and Supreme have not responded to Complex's request of comment. Emery was appointed as a streetwear's branch first creative director in February 2022. The spring summer 2023 collection was his first under creative direction. Um, the brand recently released their first pieces from this full 2023 collection, Emery's second full collection, which was met with warm receptions from fans of the brand. Across his first two seasons, Emery injected his own vision for the brand. He created varsity jackets featuring art by close friend and cactus plant flea market founder Cynthia Liu, derived many collaboration with Kugi, and um, uh, that which he dubbed a love letter to the block and a photo t shirt featuring popular NBA young boy um, popular rapper NBA young boy a perfect way to keep the young generation interested in a recent interview with Just Ma magazine Emery shared his thoughts on industry versus community validation that feel especially relevant in light of his departure from Supreme the quote I would caution kids who care about validation of these big conglomerates and media giants because these conglomerates are banks LVMH is a bank Caring Group is a bank Paramount's a bank this is late stage capitalism these institutions will finance a designer, an artist, a band, a director, a writer, whatever, to make something to get more money than what they put in. That's what it's about for them. 
quote uh, the quote says another quote if you seek their validation because so and so made you creative director you're losing in fact you've already lost but if you seek validation firstly in yourself secondly in the community that you care about and who cares about you you've got a chance to live a life without regrets um emory a unique approach Emery's unique approach to design will still be realized through his own brand Denim Tears, which has made the mark in fashion industry in recent years with storytelling of the African diaspora through clothing. Early this year, collection co-designed by Emery with Dior, aptly titled D uh, Dior Tears, released to the world. This month, Denim Tears celebrates its fourth year as a brand. And the quote says, I kind of like to see Denim Tears as a supreme for black people and anyone who wants to celebrate or commemorate what we've been through, Emery told Najee Reed of RSVP in a 2020 in uh, interview. It's using t-shirts as billboards for knowledge and expression, he says. As for Supreme, it remains to be seen if they'll hire another creative director to fulfill Emery's role um, or go back to his old ways. The brand had has, has had its fair share of struggles in recent years. Some people have been vocal about the long-running streetwear brand being dead. Financial issues have also made headlines. In June, VF Corp's annual report revealed that Supreme's revenue declined in the first fiscal year um, that ended in March 2023. VF Corp acquired Supreme for $2.1 in 2020. So, what do I think happened here? A um, couple of theories. There could be a few of them out there. There's some. There's people out there saying categorically that it was... Uh, not a good fit people inside the company are basically saying they didn't like his vision stylistically they didn't see anything that kind of matched and stuff and maybe the work wasn't good in the end which you'd imagine if you're somebody like Tremaine it would be a little bit embarrassing because I don't feel like somebody that designs on a level that he designs at um, with the experience that he has being a, a New Yorker, being plugged into the scene, knowing a lot of the people, uh, you know, at the brand before he even started to work there, knowing a lot about the brand in intrinsically because of just, you know, how old he is and how long he's been around. It's kind of embarrassing that you aren't able to somehow able to kind of plug in a little bit of what you do into what they do, because essentially what Supreme does isn't that difficult to kind of figure out. You know what I mean? Especially if you're an actually talented designer and know your way around you know ideas and executing them because essentially it's all the same sort of stuff with the exception of some of the current quote unquote cut and sew pieces it's not like you're designing for a couture house or something right you're essentially doing t-shirts and hoodies um a few jackets here and there but it shouldn't be that difficult to imbue some of your taste in what they already do and kind of you know further the message further the brand further the voice um you know maybe broaden the the scope of who they appeal to and keep things fresh it shouldn't be too difficult to do that so that's a little bit of a you know a slight on his behalf if that's the case um there are some people here that say oh the designs a bit of it shit um i don't really see how you can say that is all tremaine's fault because without any knowledge on the inside of supreme none of us on the outside are ever going to know exactly what he designed because you know it's stuff that he's designed in-house and usually if you're a creative director from what i understand of creative director roles some of them require you to be hands-on designing and whatever it may be but some of it is actually maybe like a leadership role like a you know being able to maybe spec out the overall theme of a collection right um the inspirations behind it whatever it may be right and then maybe you know using that as a springboard to kind of you know execute some ideas but it doesn't actually mean he's sitting there and designing 3m jackets so it can be difficult to kind of figure out what he designed was it his fault and then if you then figure out what he designed then you can maybe decide whether or not he's actually responsible for the sales not being as good or whatever maybe go through because that's what people are basically saying the sales weren't as great they weren't met they weren't hitting targets and obviously someone's head had to roll and of course being the creative director in the face of it he was maybe the first person that had to kick you know um kind of you know kick the can but you know what i mean he is person that had to get, get a boot but then another theory that i'm thinking about might be more might make a lot of sense it might be a combination of things because if you read an article I remember, or read the interview, I remember I listened to a few months ago that Tremaine was on some podcast talking about he had health issues, which I didn't really know much about. So he had these health issues that he went through. I think it was an aneurysm or something. He was in hospital for a very long time and he essentially nearly died. So going through that just after you get announced as Supreme Creator, because I think it just happened a few basically months after that got announced. And then having to kind of struggle through that may have been quite difficult to kind of do. 
but then at the same time as flipping the universe will have it his brand his brand is blowing up um he's now maybe you know i'd imagine if you're that close to death your kind of vision and your focus becomes laser um you want to just you know put away all distractions and just focus on your message and if he actually believes that his brand is a platform to kind of speak about the african diaspora and kind of further a message and inspire people and tell these interesting stories then why would you bother you know going and working for a supreme if you really don't care about that thing and you think this is the thing that's actually going to write your legacy this is the thing that's actually going to um, make the necessary change in society or in the world that you actually want to see or oh, that's actually going to maybe outlive you bloody blah, blah 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 so maybe that's all part of the issue kind of tied into it um but then i look at some of the stuff online and this is the reply from ages ago this is maybe from what may 2023 right and somebody i guess made a comment i'm assuming on uh i'm assuming on tremaine's instagram page i'm assuming maybe he posted something and somebody replied in the comments but look at what the, look at how tremaine was getting treated in the flipping you know supreme internet comment space and shit so this is clear indication that maybe the fans just didn't like his appointment maybe weren't fans of denim tears and were maybe a little bit underwhelmed that he was hired because they just assumed he was gonna go there and do like cotton reef box logos or something right maybe that's what they thought so this is from supreme drops it says tremaine emery reacting to someone saying supreme died when he joined and the person says as follows hate to say it but prem died when you joined right and which is you know a little bit mean to say this to be fair especially considering what he went through illness wise but i don't think this guy knew that he was ill to be fair i don't think he knew i think he just said it to be a bit cunty and whatnot but then tremaine replied at the time and said you must be really in pain like hurting bad inside to hop in my comments troll me in a post about me barely surviving an aneurysm ain't no surgery that can save you from your sickness good luck to you so maybe he was responding to the fact that he was ill i don't know but either way like you can tell the supreme fans weren't really fans of his so maybe this is for the better maybe he kind of realized hey these guys are giving me too much grief this job isn't that serious because you know having been aware of tremaine and i don't really know him too well but having been aware of him from afar i know that he was never always like a clothing fashiony guy or just like a cool style guy or cool, a kind of cool guy overall in the same way that heron preston is so i think guys like that won't really hold these type of jobs on the pedestal that probably someone like i would like i think someone like a tremaine someone like a heron preston could easily walk away from supreme and not be that bothered from it because for them it's all about idea execution they're about ideas they're about a certain message you know Tr tremaine's got his um you know uh forwarding the black experience of black diaspora kind of conversation there you've got heron preston talking about new york and you know recycling and all that sort of shit so those guys i can imagine if they can with if they were to get those jobs they could easily walk away from those jobs because they're not really hold them on a the pedestal and they're not that prestigious to them in that regard that they would kind of bend over backwards and accept any kind of abuse just to have that job so i can kind of see that being the case um so i could imagine if you're tremaine you know thinking about your health thinking about you know nearly dying thinking about the fact that you know your, your brand's blowing up and then you're getting all this hate from all these fans maybe you're like you know what this ain't worth it i'm gonna step aside and do my own thing so they might that may not be a combination of stuff but i just think for somebody that came through with this collection for the supreme Four 2023 collection i think he just deserved a couple more just for the sake of it because i feel like this might have been one of the strongest they've done in recent years and again this isn't just all his doing because you know collections aren't just made by one person i'm sure there are many people that kind of played a part in this but if he did a quote-unquote dud in spring 2023 and then was able to bounce right back with this i think it clearly shows that he was learning on the job and figuring it out and he would have then de delivered even a better collection come spring of next year so it's a shame he wasn't able to do that but i guess it's the nature of the beast when you're supreme and you're you know you basically accept investment from a vf corp they're going to put different constraints different requirements um they're going to have different kpis different targets and shit that they want you to hit and if you don't hit them somebody's heads need to roll because they've invested money and they're going to need to call some shots they're going to need to see that you're making some effort to change and rectify things because they have their own board to kind of and you know shareholders and stuff that they've got to satisfy so there's loads of conflicting things that kind of play into the decision making process of how supreme move nowadays so maybe he's just a you know um a victim of that kind of thing going on and less so his own work like i said i think if it is an issue of his own work i would be highly embarrassed because i feel like supreme 
and what they do for as great as it is and it's a brand I love and I've always loved it from the beginning of when I got into Street Wear Supreme and Bape and basically the hundreds were brands that kind of you know taught me everything I know about clothes and fashion and culture and music and art and all that stuff it's crazy how much I've kind of gained from I've learned from all those kind of guys and kind of being around it and go to a store and learn people that worked there and whatnot it's all kind of been a crazy experience from the forums and everything I fucking love it but let's not kind of you know let's not mince our words this isn't fucking high level fashion and shit this is streetwear that tremaine also does in his own way um i think he should easily be able to imbue his own taste and you know whatever into what they do so if you're not able to do that and not able to kind of fulfill that that is basically a bit of a slight and i would be a little bit embarrassed about it and i'm hoping if that is the case i'm hoping that he's able to be honest about it and just own up and say yep yeah, you know I didn't meet the grade. I wasn't good enough to do the job, but it was a good experience. I'm going to learn from it because I feel like a lot of kids could learn from that also to realize that, hey, somebody at the top of his game at Tremaine, even he found it difficult to execute his kind of ideas at that level. Because if it turns into him making it into an issue that it was more than his actual work and there was other forces conspiring against him that would be a real shame if it isn't that i hope it that there's somehow we find out i don't think we will it's not really you know we don't really des you know deserve anyone no owes us fans explanation but i would love to see there be an option where we get to hear from him and he tells us exactly what went on um checking out these instagram i don't really see anything on here that kind of gives us indication on what went on um there's actually a picture here from the article i need to actually check out here that kind of shows you an effect of maybe the you know the illness that he was kind of going through because he does look very very gaunt and skinny here compared to how he usually looks um and you know he's lost a lot of weight maybe it's just through fitness and stuff but from what i can tell looking at his pictures and being sick myself sometimes you can tell this is definitely the result of somebody being a bit sickly so maybe the illness just kind of made him realize certain things he's like you know what i'm not gonna fuck around wasting time on something that i'm not super passionate about and i'm gonna now start focusing in on the things that i really really give a shit about going forward and kind of solidify that because you only get one life and i'm not gonna waste my time kind of fulfilling somebody else's brand and message when i can just be focused and doing it my own because clearly denim tears is going places and it's kind of got only getting bigger and better and better i've just seen recently bloody osiris osiris sorry debuting that fucking all leather um cotton reef set which looks fucking phenomenal we saw the fucking roadblock it caused when you know um uh, uh, denim tears dropped the fucking um tracksuit you know so clearly um so the cotton sweatshirt tracksuit then clearly denim tears has a hold on the streets so maybe that was the cause of what he decided to kind of decide to you know change tact and go for there but i think just looking at it from the outside looking in and checking man's instagram and shit and again this doesn't matter because it's just me speculating from the outside but something was something always felt up anyway because it didn't feel like he really was like posting about supreme a lot on his page now maybe it's a, maybe it's like a cool guy thing you don't always want to look like you're happy to have a job or like you're pleased or whatever you're over the moon you always want to kind of keep it somewhat kind of low-key but i always thought that was kind of interesting like why doesn't man post more about supreme like there's not really most any post on there there's not really a lot of posts sorry on his instagram account you know maybe posts of him working on stuff maybe you're not allowed to post that shit but i don't know just something there is no indication of that kind of you know role the love he has for it and stuff there's some stuff here and there but you know there's not much so maybe this is an indication that he wasn't really feeling it as much as maybe we thought he was feeling it but um regardless let's check my instagram stories and see if he posted anything there any kind of subtle indications as to why um this uh firing or this letting go happened uh, we got posted some guy looking incredibly cool actually wearing the boxes that's a really good look he's got the denim tears boxes on um you know some sag pants and a pair of fucking geo basket rick owens this is a very very good look because i would never wear my geo baskets like this but he's actually swagged them out really good so big up this guy called forrest ripperton you were absolutely freaked out them ricks and also the dem tears boxes so big up you there's a post here that features um the fiona apple bottom album review from pitchfork called fetch the bolt cutters it says fyi how's that her last album was the bolt cutters or oh, maybe <clears throat> okay this is interesting this might be an indication of what happened because this is him saying i got fired or i got let go but then my last collection was one of the best collections ever maybe that's maybe an indication of it because he's obviously posting a screenshot of this for you on the apple bottom album and pitchfork review maybe i'm reading into it but who knows um next slide you've got a, i don't know what this picture is from maybe it's from a movie and the caption says y'all can have it 
they give those out for free at, at, at a man in Turks at the a man in Turks okay cool y'all can have it as in what supreme is back to you the haters and stuff i don't know what he means by that but i guess there's some reference to the movie i'm not really too sure if you guys know let me know um there's a post here featuring lyrics of Nas's album nigger and uh, the album the lyrics goes they used to string us up we wanted everything but the one bringing us cake be the snakes like the like the new jack city wedding scene no time for mistakes trying to get it like medellin they say we n i double g e r we are much more still we choose to ignore the obvious man this history don't acknowledge us we were scholars long before colleges not really sure where he's getting at with that particular bar but it's a fucking bar um obviously pick up nas i don't know maybe that's again maybe somebody snaked him at supreme maybe he felt like he was otherized because he was black i don't know who knows um more um lyrics here um courtesy of that track nigger from nas uh the the ones i can see here says they say the close ones will hurt you so let's keep a circle small on the road to riches and diamond rings hmm so maybe he feels like somebody betrayed him and backstabbed him maybe that's the case why he feels like that happened so maybe this is not the most um what you call it this is not the most uh this isn't done on good terms it feels like and then we got more here the album cover of of um of the album itself features uh, the back of nas with obviously um looks like he's been whipped but in the shape of the n and with Sa he's got black santa claus written on either side and then we've got a tweet here from Dead in Tears from the 27th that says 40 acres and a tear. Don't know what that means. And then we've got another one here. A post here courtesy of somebody else talking about an exhibition, I think, happening or something. I don't really know. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really too sure what the deal is and what he's talking about here. But from what we can see, it looks like it wasn't it wasn't the most amicable split so far. I can read that. Right. Let's just, just check man's Twitter. Let's see what he said there. Let's see if he said anything on his Twitter because it looks like it wasn't an amicable split and he's clearly not too happy about it. But he's also saying, hey, at least I went out with a bang. I did a 10 out of 10 collection and you guys can have it. I'm not really too bothered, blah, blah, blah. I don't mean too sure. Maybe that's what he's doing. Um, let me see if I can scroll down and see what he says here, courtesy of man's Twitter. Maybe he said some more, you know, uh, interesting things. What do you say? Um, yeah, cool. So here we go. Today he said, Kane in pirates cooking up for september another one says that ether that shit that make your tears burn slow so again no indication of what's happening five hours ago but he has said the following and then there's any replies here restock ready made tears they ready made jesus though okay cool so no one's actually said anything in reply so it kind of is what it is everyone's kind of responding to news as it is but i think for me from what I've been able to read in between the lines, I think it was probably a combination of things that kind of led to him leaving. I don't think it was one thing. And um, it's a bit of a shame. Like I said, the last season, this season currently, sorry, is fucking phenomenal. Maybe one of the best ones out. There's so many hard body pieces in this collection that I would instantly fucking wear. And if this is the second collection after a dud, I would want to see what he does after going forward because clearly he learned from whatever missteps he took in the first and applied it to the second. And again, I'm just saying that loosely because I still think people are overestimating how much he actually designed. I don't think he sat there and designed every fucking single piece. That's not how creative directors work. Um, you always work with a team, you lead, you kind of spec the overall vision and shit. Um, maybe that's the way it goes. Maybe it's not, who knows, but that's where I understand it to go. But either way, I would have liked to have seen more from him at Supreme because clearly he had something there and I felt like it was a match a well a well a good match actually because you know him being a new yorker intrinsically tied into the streetwear scene um got his own brand already running and kind of knows what to do he's not gonna learn on the job he kind of knows the role knows how to make stuff blah 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 all that stuff kind of would have worked well and also being a bit of a culture kid and shit and a man around town i think that would have worked out too but it didn't so going forward i'm interested to know what they will do because i feel like supreme kind of maybe fucked him in that they're quite faceless. That's one of the beauties about Supreme and Stussy. They kind of are able to consistently put out collection after collection after collection and not really have to kind of bend to the whims and the wiles of their fans because they're a bit faceless. They just churn out the, the collections and they're usually a six out of 10 or up going forward. But once you hire a creative director and you slap it all over everywhere, you have press releases and shit, 
it kind of makes him the face of the brand, even though he's not. And then all the kind of negative comments kind of get directed towards him because he's the quote unquote face. So they kind of fucked him a little bit in that regard. And then that kind of takes your, your, your focus away from actually fo designing, you're maybe addressing comments, you're thinking about what people are saying. It just, it's not really conducive, I think, to um, great creative output, personally for me. So going forward, I'm interested to see what they would end up doing. Will they end up going back to how they were before, where it's all kind of in-house and you don't really know what I want? Because when that Angelo guy was there, I forgot what his name of his brand is. I think his name is like Angelo Back. I forgot he pronounced his name, Backy or Back, whatever it was. I apologize. But when he was there, he was technically the creative director, from what I understand. Um, and, you know, when he left, they then made that creative director role and then Trim Income was hired underneath it. So I wonder if now going forward, whether they'll just keep it in-house and not have it be a big swanky person and just decide it's kind of something that they kind of split between three people. They have it in a team. Or they just go back to how they were previously because it was working pretty well. They don't need, probably need to have it. But if they do do it, <clears throat> I wonder if they'll go and get someone like the woman from Cactus Plant Flea Market to go and do stuff like that. Like she might be a pretty decent fit to go and work at Supreme and kind of do that. I wonder if they would, you know, going forward say, hey, we're going to fucking hire the guy from Cortez, um, Clint to come and work in-house with us and kind of learn on the job and then with the idea of maybe growing into the role being creative director would he take it i don't really know um but it is interesting to see i feel like nowadays the younger designer and kids now i don't think they care about these roles as much as we did my generation and shit i feel like my generation and shit because i know people who legitimately just work at supreme warehouse and shit and to them that's a prestigious job they kind of hold it, you know, they kind of hold that shit. They treat that shit like that they're working at Apple because they get to work at Supreme. It doesn't matter if they're working in the warehouses, working, they work in retail in the fucking stores, they get to work for the brand. So to them, it's a big deal. And they have a vision in their head of maybe working their way up to go to work in the head office, whatever it may be. But I feel like the kids nowadays would rather work a shitty bar job <clears throat> and put all their money that they earn from that bar job into their t-shirt brand, into their brand overall, into their magazine, into their fucking you know um vintage store archive store um styling gig whatever it may be they'd rather do that than work underneath somebody big work at a place like supreme and shit they don't give a fuck it doesn't actually you know capture them like it did to us so i'm interested to know if they would <clears throat> if supreme are going to go down the route of hiring somebody more of tremaine's age group or older or trying to tap somebody young to appeal to a younger market I wonder because I feel like that's one of the reasons why Supreme for me has kind of felt a little bit stale and a little bit dead because there's clearly been a shift in trying to appeal to more kids but it's kind of meant there's an overabundance of like logo driven stuff and you see a lot of the fucking logo everywhere and it's not it's not like tonal anymore the logo on on the clothes that they put on the logo they put on the clothes isn't tonal it's mostly like just the actual thing in different colors and shit so you see it from fucking far so obviously you know kids love branding and shit and big logos so they do a lot more of that so i wonder if they get another person in who's a bit older who maybe has a different type of aesthetic they may want to like tone that shit down again and bring supreme back to kind of what it kind of was where there was some flashy bits here and there but it wasn't all flashy and whether or not that would hit with the clients or with the customers or if this is just the natural state of things if you're supreme and you accept 2.2 billion dollar investment and you're now making you know launching all these different stores you've got a store in south korea another store opening already i think in italy and many more maybe to come which you would imagine means you increase the quantities and the amounts of stuff that you make which would then result in you having more stock on the shelves because there's a lot more of it out there so the resale and just the limited edition aspect of supreme is kind of not what it used to be um, it just basically means you're going to have more stock and you're not going to be making more money because you're spending more on making the stuff. So maybe with that being said, it's hard to really pin the, pin the blame on any one person because, you know, you're making more. Um, there's <clears throat> more brands than ever taking up people's attention. Like, for instance, having been exposed to No Jumper, I've been exposed to this whole different scene of these Instagram LA brands, like Half Evil. Half Evil I've never really known about, but they have they have a completely different scene that they all kind of infatuated with, where they don't give a fuck about Stussy or Supreme and shit. They just care about those type of brands. So I'd imagine a lot of kids, their attention or their wallet spend is being split across all these different brands. So it's hard to maybe get those kids to spend the money they'll spend on Half Evil and then spend it on fucking Supreme. 
So that might be an issue too. It's just nowadays it's just more competition. You're having to kind of compete with more brands for the customer's money. Um, so I want interested to see what happens going forward progress wise. But as I said, um, if you're going to go out with a bang, you know, this is one way to go out with a bang. I feel like um, spring 2023 was legitimately is at the moment one of their best collections they've done in a very fucking long time. Um, everything in this collection is fucking hard body, beyond hard body. I'd wear their fuck out of everything. So if he did go out in style, then big up um, Tremaine for doing so. And hopefully we get an explanation as to what actually went on and what occurred. We probably never will. But I do think it's a cautionary tale for, you know, designers out there and brand owners out there to not always hold these positions up you know on a pedestal because at the end of the day you're still working for somebody you're still an employee and you have to meet targets and shit and it is a cut for an industry and if you don't and you didn't get, you end up kind of get fired or let go it can do some real damage to your you know to your confidence to your ego to your momentum whatever it may be so it can be a very um you have to be very cautious about taking these positions it's not always a positive thing to do it maybe is better to kind of suffer and you know spend the time focusing on your own brand because then at least you get to kind of write your own legacy do your own thing and kind of you know the success of your brand is kind of you know relegated to the kind of success of the stuff that you do yourself so you don't have to kind of you know clock in and clock in with somebody else you know what i mean but yeah regardless good way to go out if that is a full collection you absolutely smashed it still and i think this stuff is going to be you know it's going to definitely be up there in the fucking supreme hall of fame when it all said and done when it's all said and done moving on from that i went to mention this because i feel like in general because i've seen this a few stuff that is referenced a lot in fucking Bergheim community subreddit and shit and a lot of other places i see a lot of people on there kind of complaining essentially about the whole entire scene being you know um drenched in people that are enjoying too much ghb on the dance floor and i've kind of felt like some of the complaints that people have about the ghb users is mostly to do with the people themselves being absolute cunts and less to do with the drugs they're taking because like i said previously in many many pods before when I went to Bergheim, maybe last in maybe June of last year or something, right? Um, I remember, um, funny enough, bumping into one of the guys who used to found, who used to who used to be running the party called Crossbreed, um, the kink sort of like sex positive party we had here in the UK. That unfortunately had to close down because the founder Kiwi, um, was a, accused of some, you know, some some egregious things. So I remember being in Bergheim one time and I bumped into him. And as we bumped into him, I was talking to him a little bit, you know, saying how much I enjoyed his parties and stuff and what he's doing to keep it up and shit. There's this girl that we saw that looked like she was, you know, super, super high or maybe fucked up and we're trying to help her and stuff. And um, along the night, you know, me and this other girl ended up helping her get some water and stuff. We realized that she wasn't fucked. She wasn't harm She wasn't harmed anyway. She just taken too much G. And it's the first time I'd kind of seen the negative effects of it. So she kind of looked like a zombie, a little bit spaced out and shit. And it kind of obviously, to the point where it made me and strangers concerned that we were kind of going out of way to help her. And in the end, she kind of figured it out and kind of scurried away. But since then, it felt like it's been ramping up now. Maybe it was during lockdown and maybe went crazy. Um, and obviously, it's a big drug anyway in the, in the gay scene because of what I've heard. It kind of, you know... Um, releases your inhibitions it makes you super sexual and horny and shit um but it's also something that doesn't give you a serious hangover like maybe other drugs do and you obviously don't need much to kind of get high blah -de blah 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 and the high can sometimes last for quite long so a lot of people have been into it but obviously some people have been abusing it also and it's turned into a bit of an issue now i feel like a lot of people complaining about ghb some of the complaints i feel like are like a weird attempt to like moral posturing it's sort of like a i'm a better raver than you i don't need to be a zombie type of thing or you know it's a way to kind of um signal um that you are you know a better raver because you don't do any drugs whatsoever and you go to raves completely sober and shit i don't really know but i feel like the complaints are getting a little bit tired um i feel like again a bit repetitive and i kind of think it just is what it is like Bergheim is probably the best and worst represented representation of global club culture and maybe drug trends and shit because it's one of the best clubs in the world so because of that you're going to attract just about everybody from all corners of the world to come and dance and have a good time there even though they've got a very strict door policy and people usually go in there with good vibes you're probably going to have the odd dickhead and the odd cunt walking into Bergheim, right it doesn't matter what community they're from what race they are sexual orientation there's going to be some dickheads in there so i think if you have one of the most popular clubs in the world attracting 
you know everybody across the world to go and go in there you're gonna most likely have some dickheads and if you take give dickheads some drugs they're gonna maybe do dickhead things on dance floor. So i think that's just basically what it is so people to kind of get on their high horse and act like ghp is any worse than any other drug people are taking on the dance floor is legitimately insane and if it is that bad just find other things to do it really isn't that deep i don't feel like it's not really that deep um to people to be posting a million fucking questions about the drug all the time because at some point it kind of feels like are you like curious to try it yourself if you are try it yourself be a grown-up you know what i mean pull up your fucking big boy pants order some and see what happens in it but all this fucking moral posturing, this virtue signaling people are doing about GHB bad, people take it bad. It's like, all right, cool, we get it. You're a better raver than all of us. You don't need to kind of explore other things. You can kind of stick to doing your fucking little sprinkles of, you know, MDMA in your water and you're fine. Cool, whatever, enjoy yourself. Some people are maybe looking for other things to keep the party going. And if this is one of the things they want to do and they want to explore and they want to do it in a safe and man, you know, manageable way, let them do it. Um, I'm a bit of a you know what you call it free i'm a bit of a free speech absolutist in that way in, in terms of choice like just do what the fuck you want be responsible as an adult and if the cons and, and if the circ and if you kind of don't do it responsibly and there are some unfortunate consequences to your actions kind of you know accept the responsibility of dealing with them yourself as well don't kind of put that burden on anybody else that's the only thing i don't like about people that do those kind of drugs when you're kind of you're now forcing other people to kind of get involved in your nonsense and to look after you and stuff and take time away from enjoying themselves to kind of get you right that's obviously not fair but overall it's not really that big of a deal it kind of is what it is like people just need to calm the fuck down when it comes to fucking whining and playing like people's use of fucking ghp on the dance floor that's my point when it comes to that sort of shit then i was thinking a little bit about that because after carnival or before i think after kind of on sunday there was a hot box after party and hot box is something that i've only kind of been familiar with in the last year or so um and they do some really cool parties um around london in random places um secret locations and shit unless you buy the ticket um no pictures allowed they actually enforce that for real um, and people usually respect it and essentially uh, a party that's essentially aimed at the lgbtq queer section of the community of clubbers that we have out here in london and in general, because London club scene is so fucking shit, these guys are, I think, and others are doing some of the best parties out there. So effectively, because the London you know, club scene is terrible and they, they're creating this party specifically for their own community, now they're getting other people like myself, like the straights and the sisters are coming in and essentially invading their space. And I wonder how they feel about it. Like I wonder how that scene of people feel when all these straight people come to their spaces you know they don't get dressed up they don't really make much of an effort but they go there because they know they're going to have a good time because by and large most of these parties are usually the best parties you're going to get in london because if you try and go to a fabric or an e1 you really are at the mercy of the crowd that goes there the night itself is going to be whatever but if the crowd is rubbish doesn't matter who's playing you're gonna have a dead time whereas at places like hotbox i feel like the lineup isn't really that important you're usually going to have decent people playing maybe be some up and coming people playing but it's mostly about the community people being so fun so vibrant that it's going to make you have an absolute you're guaranteed to have a good time when you go there and i'm thinking of going to the next one but i was just thinking in my head like i wonder if they fucking hate the straights that go to their events because we eventually end up you know not allowing them to kind of be free and do their own thing you kind of add you know that straight cis vibe and ambiance to a room of people who kind of feel like this this is their quote-unquote safe space i wonder if it's something that they kind of hate but then the other side is also maybe a mark of how successful and how great what they do is that people like myself are paying attention so much so that we want to go out there and kind of go and enjoy it also i'm not really too sure but i, I am more than sure now of all these years that i've kind of gone out that london club scene might be one of the worst in europe like by hands down might be one of the worst because i think to myself like for all the good stuff i've said about fold over the years and i still think it's obviously one of our best clubs that we have out here i'm not ever gonna sit here and deny that it's still just one club and the fact that one club can have such a fucking stranglehold on our scene just it's, to me says more things about how shitty our our scene is in london than about how good fold is because fold is kind of like a overall let's say a seven out of ten club 
But if you're a 7 out of 10 club, you're basically 10 out of 10 in London, essentially. Because they go out of their way to try at least to have a, you know, a decent community there. They try to do the whole sticking your sticker over your phone so people can kind of focus on raving and not be worried about taking fucking shitty videos of DJs playing and shit. Um, they have a decent space, a good sound system, a nice little smoking area. All these type of things that are kind of the bare necessities, they kind of do pretty well. And people flock to it. But again, I feel like this should be the standard. This should be the the benchmark for all places. It should be like this. But for some reason, it's not. You go to places like Color Factory, and that's really kind of hit and miss. E1 really hit and miss. Corsica Studios hit and miss. Venue MOT hit and miss. Now, all these places are fucking hit and miss, and they are some of our best clubs that we have in London. And the only thing that you can go to now, which with a somewhat... Um, guarantee of success are these queer and lgbtq parties which you know feel like deep down you're invading in their space and also um they're things that you kind of have to be plugged in to know about you kind of have to follow um the fucking instagram you have to be plugged into their instagram on hotbox and how and a few other people to find out what's going on if you're not plugged into your instagrams if you're not following on certain time if you're not checking certain things you won't see the post go up you won't see because they pur- they probably do this on purpose to you know keep away certain people but you have to be really plugged in you can't just on the whim decide to go to hotbox events because they don't have them in regular clubs they have them usually in from what i am understood like you know unauthorized locations and shit so all that stuff kind of adds to the overall law but then it means you have to kind of work a lot harder to kind of go to these venues and these parties which is a good thing don't get me wrong but i think for the regular person who just wants to have a good time you have to do a lot of work to kind of just have a good time whereas i feel like in most decent european cities with good club scenes they have at least four or five decent regular clubs that a normie person can walk into and have a good time but if you do want to go to the underground you can access that also but in the london the only decent parties to go to are the underground parties the ones that i would term as the alt quote-unquote parties they're the best ones everything else is fucking garbage let's actually check this video here what's actually this is like a forest somewhere is that a forest yeah this is 2019 right a forest rave somewhere in london look at how fun and enjoyable that looks when's the last time you've been to a london party outside of fold and if you have a place where you see that many people dancing you don't really see it happening right some guys jumping on top of a tree dancing there's people going crazy shaking their hands everywhere moving absolutely going for it in the middle of this forest somewhere in the summer heat absolutely brilliant you don't see it anywhere else in london that's all happened and they have to do this in forest because they, they don't really have else to do it anywhere else in clubs because it's too fucking expensive and shit so it's a real shame to be honest um a realization i had over the fucking last few months because i haven't really been going to club nights that often and i feel like i've been a bit lazy but also there's not nothing that's been really been calling me um if i'm actually thinking about it the only thing i've kind of been thinking of actually going to has been this um devious one all night at fold but again i saw devious one play alongside renee wise at fold right back to back so um uh them all night i think uh, devious one played first then renee wise and that was decent so how much better is it going to be that, that night i don't really know the following saturday there's a fold and Malajunta event happening which is going to be fucking fantastic great lineup um dj tall hyperactivist d dan yes you know the regular fucking lineup of people from Malajunta. there's a budokai event happening that's going to be pretty decent also natural selections always do really good waves but again you're still going to the same club every weekend to me it's fucking boring you know what i mean as great as fold is i want to mix shit up again i want to go to different locations different events and stuff but do i really trust e1 with my night do i really trust um fucking phonox with my night do i really trust corsica studios venue mot do i really trust them to actually give me a good night because i'm going to be spending 20 30 quid to get there maybe some more on an uber maybe some more on some gear maybe some more on some drinks and it's going to tally up so i don't want to take that chance when i know if i go to fold likely seven out of ten times i'm gonna have a great time so i'd rather take that chance but then again i'm still going to the same club every weekend and i don't think there's anything more lame than going to the same club every weekend i think even if i lived in fucking bergheim i'm sorry even if i lived in berlin i don't think i'd go to bergheim every fucking weekend i feel like mixing it up and being a part of the scene in a real way is a better way to kind of go about things but you know maybe i don't really know what i'm talking about i'm talking about my house i'm really too sure but I just kind of thought about that the other day thinking you know what the scene isn't that great and it isn't because i'm just super lazy it might be because of that but it's also because there's not that great vents anymore as it was in the past it's just not the same anymore it's just always it's gone a bit 
it's gonna be shitty you know um this is a good event actually my guys at night service um pick up them they've got an event here um which features Yanamase back to backwards setok match which is gonna be sick um and obviously donna also playing back to back with Paige, and obviously belly Yip's a couple playing as well so that should be nice as well there's some good events happening don't get me wrong um but overall it's just like bomba right obviously there's a foal presents 10 years of um monon that that should be good tonight as well but overall i'm just a little bit you know come on man there needs to be more there should be there should be five of these in london there should be five foals in london by just a standard thing but there's not so it kind of is a bit annoying but hey what can you do Anyways, I'll leave my ranting there. Thank you so much for tuning into the Axion Zing Show episode number 701. Hope you've had a good time and you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure that you let me know by leaving me a five star review. Why don't you do that? Leave me a five star review and let me know you enjoyed the show. But you can also share it around with your friends and shit. That'd be also appreciated. And if you are listening to this via the audio podcast, you'll hear my tune day playing underneath my voice. So enjoy that as I kind of bid you farewell and I'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, my friends. Thank you for listening. Peace.